Good morning and welcome to Victory Church. Today is our worship service number 150 since we started the church. And today is August 11, 2019. Would you like to stand up? Pray with me. Thank you, Father, for this gorgeous day of life you are giving us. Thank you, Lord, for your amazing grace. Thank you, Father, that we are alive and we can sing to you, Lord. And please receive the songs that we bring to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Captives 
free Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is the Lamb, the Lion of Judah He's roaring with power and fighting our battles Every knee would bow before Him Before the lion and the lamb, every knee will bow before him. you 
abounds in deepest waters your sovereign hand will be my kind where feet may fail and fear surround me you've never Try. 
Lord, you are majestic, King of the universe. We bow down before you to give you, Lord, the honor you deserve. We bow down before you, Lord, to say, Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord God Almighty. What a wonderful experience, Lord, to be in your presence and to see what you do, Lord, in our lives, in our hearts. Thank you, Father, for the transformation you are doing in our hearts. Thank you, Father, because you called us, Father, when we were lost, when we were in the darkness, and you brought us to the light to dwell in your presence, Lord, where there is plenty of joy. Here we are, Lord. Would you please, Father, pour down more of your Holy Spirit in this moment please Lord pour it down so we can receive from you Lord the touch of your Holy Spirit fill us Lord remove the sadness in the heart that is sad remove the fear in the heart that is frightened remove the doubt in the heart that is not certain Remove the bitterness in the heart that is still hurting. Clean us, Lord. Purify us, Lord. And fill our hearts with your presence, your Holy Spirit, Lord. That we can feel, Father, that powerful touch that transformed our lives. Father, we lift up our hands to be ready to to receive from you what you have for us today. So we receive in this moment, Lord, more of your presence, your forgiveness, your grace. We receive in this moment, Lord, also the healing in our emotions, the healing in our minds, the healing in our bodies. If you receive that, if you need to receive the touch of healing in your body, just put your hand in that part of your body that you need healing. Just put your hand there and claim it and believe it. Father, heal me. Father, restore me. You can do it, Lord. You are king of the universe. You are the ruler of the world. Heal me, Lord. Heal me, Father. 
In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, for that healing you are giving us today, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. May your name, Jesus, be exalted in this place. Over and over again, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. One day I will have. That's the title of today's message. One day I will have. I would like to invite you to come to our website and look for the tab bulletins and download the bulletin. It's available in a PDF format and you can make your notes right there in your mobile device or computer. But for those, for those here in the church, you are ready to, to write your notes. So let me ask you the question. If you could fill out the blanks, one day I will have, what would you write? A <laughs> Lamborghini? <laughs> I'm with you, brother. Not to the movies, though. <laughs> what, what would you write? You know, for everyone it's different. You know, for some people, what they would like to have is some stuff other people are thinking of. Family, other people are thinking of health, and for everyone it's different. I, I get that. But isn't it true that we dream with something always? I wish that one day I will have. Everybody, it doesn't matter how old we are, we always think, I wish one day I will have. What is what we want? Well, basically we have desires, right? We have dreams. And, but let's talk a little bit about things that we usually want. For instance, one of those things is we want to have special food or a particular drink one day. We are just like, I wish that I would have this particular meal. Some people like seafood. Other people like steak. Other people like certain drinks. And they say, I wish that I would have this drink one day. And uh, for other people, the dream is a trip. I know some of you are not interested in going to the Middle East, but I want one day go to Israel. I would love to go to Israel. In Greece, in Italy, you know, I would like that. Uh, that is one desire, you know, a trip. But uh, for other people, it's just a toy. What's the toy? Well, the toy could be a Lamborghini. <laughs> uh, it could be uh, a new iPhone. <laughs> you know, a simple brand new car that is a working car, you know. <laughs> it just wants a working car, you know. Not, but I don't have many troubles with that. Uh, or it could be anything else. A piece of jewelry. I don't know. House, a property, a vacation house. How about that? Not bad, huh? Nice. For other people, the dream is to have someone. Some people say, ah, one day I would love to have somebody. I heard this beautiful story this week, and this girl said to me, I was just sad not having somebody. And I prayed and prayed and I prayed, Lord, give me somebody. And nothing happened. <laughs> nothing happened. So I went to the stadium to watch uh, this, uh, the Permian uh, football, to watch the game. And I'm there crying out because I see there are many couples there. And I'm there watching the game. And I am like, Lord, give me somebody. I want somebody. I'm tired of being here watching the game by myself. And I am crying out. And guess what happened? A guy was checking me out. <laughs> but she said, but Gian, I'm so shy. When I was there, I thought, oh my gosh, he's going to talk to me. He's going to talk to me. He's going to talk to me. I grabbed my phone and I started to play with my phone, trying to ignore this guy. Well, you know what? Next, next Friday, I'm there. And guess what happened? The guy is there. And he's checking me out again. And then the next Friday, the same thing. So you know what I decided? What? I decided that I'm going to check him out also. <laughs> so he's checking me out, I'm checking him out, you know? And eventually we talk and he invited me out and now we are together. 
Beautiful. People have that dream to have somebody one day. Other people dream with the idea of having a family, kids, or just get together with the family, being again in a family. Many of us have lived the experience of losing our family. Suddenly there are no more kids, there is no spouse, and we lost the house and whatnot. And then we think, oh, one day I would like to have a family again. You know, I would like to have my dog again, you know. Even though I get mad at the dog because you know, bathroom problems, but, but I would like to have that feeling of family, you know. Other people, their desire is just to have friends. You know that? There are individuals that don't have a friend. They don't have close friends. They have a lot of acquaintances. They work with people, but they don't have close friends, and they say, I would like to have friends, but good friends. Other people dream with a new job, a new career. They say, one day I would love to have a business. I would like to have my own business. And they dream about that. And others, they are thinking, well, one day I would like to, to find a church. But the thing is, whether it's a church, or it's, a, it's someone, or family, or a toy, or a job, or career, we all know that not always what we dream and we desire becomes in a... <laughs> wonderful reality. Sometimes the reality is bad. And then we are disappointed and upset and whatnot. But uh, honestly, the issue here is that we one day wanted to have something. And, and you, know, you know what is interesting? It's interesting that I ask you to turn off the phones and you don't do it. <laughs> that, that is interesting. It's Okay. Now, guys, what, what, is, what are the feelings? I want to share with you three steps of feelings that we have when we are wanting for something. The first feeling is when we find that person, it's so exciting, right? Or when we get that job. I don't know if you remember that when you were, were, you were looking for a job and you were like, I will do whatever. I just need a job. And then they say to you, well, of course you get the job. You get, I, I'm hired, yeah, you get the job. Oh man, that is awesome. But I want you here at 6 a.m. I'll be there at 5.30. <laughs> but you know what? You have to bring your own lunch. Don't worry about it. I can eat crackers, don't care. I don't care. And you know, six days a week, it's okay. I'll do it. Until 7 p.m., I'll be until 8. <laughs> That's the excitement that we get when we get that thing that we want. <laughs> until we are satisfied with that thing. And then we start thinking, well, how is the job? It's okay. <laughs> and how, how is the girl? How is the new girl? It's okay. And how is the baby? It's okay. <laughs> hey, how is the new church? It's okay. <laughs> hey, what about your friends and this and that? It's okay. You know, the excitement to start going down to the point where everything is just a routine. And the problem is that then here's a routine. Two people that at the beginning, they didn't know what else to do to please the other. Here are the flowers. Here is your steak. And uh, here is the jewelry. Oh, here are your jeans ironed with the little thing that you want. <laughs> You know, suddenly all that, from the excitement to the okay, to the routine, and then the girl says, you don't bring me flowers anymore. That, that sounds like a song, right? You don't bring me flowers, something like that. And then the guy says, the guy says, you know what? For the last week, I'm the one cooking here in the house. You don't fix me even a... A plate, a piece of toast, nothing. What's the deal? You know, it happens they, from the excitement to the okay, to the routine, and then it's like, oh. But what is the problem, guys? The problem is when we get to that point, we are not showing appreciation to the job, to the spouse, to the children, to whatever, and then we can lose them. We can lose them, you think. No. Oh, yeah. Because somebody is going to be looking for that thing or that person somewhere else, and that person is going to start bringing flowers and bringing the steak. And, mm -hmm. 
So you can lose what you have if you don't take good care of it. That's what I want you to see. Now I want to share with you the seven things that I consider should be in your list of priorities. And the first thing that you should have in your priorities is the Lord. You cannot do that to the Lord. The excitement of finding God. I'm, I'm in love with the Lord. Singing songs for the Lord and you just love the Lord. But suddenly you stop praying. You stop reading the Bible. It's like that love was quenched. And no, that's not right. You need to keep the Lord, number one. The second, second thing you need to appreciate is your life. That you are alive. That you have eternal life. So every day you wake up and you say, thank you, Lord. I love you, Lord. You are good to me, Father. Thank you, Father, I have a life. You know, I'm hurting here. My arm doesn't want to work. My head is all messed up. My hip hurts. Oh, standing up is a problem. My stomach. But I'm alive, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Right? Lord, it's true. I have eternal life. You know, I'm not going to hell. I'm going to heaven. That is awesome, Father. That is great. And you know what, Lord? It's true. I'm hurting all that, but I can see. I can walk. I can hear. So I have relative good health. Thank you, Father. I appreciate that, that you are blessing me, Lord. The fourth thing that you need to appreciate is your family. Don't forget to bring those flowers. Don't forget to fix that steak. Don't forget to do those little things that you used to do for your family. Because it's important. You don't want to lose them. The fifth thing is to appreciate your work. Yeah, it's true. Working from 5 30 in the morning to 7 p.m. is just too much. Eventually, your body will say, stop. But... Now you have a different schedule, things are getting better for you or your business, but that doesn't mean you are not going to appreciate that career, that work, that job. You say, praise God, I have this job. Praise God, I have this. You should appreciate that. Number six, you need to appreciate your church. Finding a church is not easy. You know, I always think about people that are Unchurched people. I think of them because I want to reach them out. I want them in the church. I want them in the kingdom of God. But I think of them because it breaks my heart when I think of those individuals that are not part of the church. And they don't know the truth about the Lord and the church. And then suddenly there are 25 churches trying to reach out to this person. Preachers on TV. Preachers on Facebook. Because now everyone is a preacher. Have you noticed that on Facebook? Everyone is a preacher on Facebook. Everyone is putting a post there. They put the scripture. They say every kind of, any kind of stuff. And they, everyone thinks, I'm a great preacher. You know, because they put a post. You know? So imagine people that are unchurched people. They will be, I suppose, highly confused. Thinking, who is right? Who is telling the truth? Look at this guy. This guy is here just with a casual shirt. This other guy is wearing a suit and a tie, so elegant. This guy is wearing a robe. These guys, they have a choir and this full orchestra. And here you have this guy with a simple guitar. Ching, 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 ching. You know? It, there are so many options for unchurched people. This is a difficult decision. I, I just feel for them. I think, oh my gosh. That will, that will be probably very difficult to make a decision and say where I'm going to be. But once you have your church, you should appreciate your church and say, well, you know what? We are not perfect. We have our things. Just look at our pastor to begin with. And then the rest of us, you know, but praise God, I have a church. You should appreciate your church. Correct? And the seventh thing that you should appreciate is your stuff. Take good care of your stuff. You know, it's true, it's not an iPhone 10 or what is the newest, uh, the newest uh, iPhone? X, S, Max. X, X, Max. 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 X, X, Max next month. Until next month. Oh, oh I see. There is a new one in, new, in one month, my gosh. Okay. Well, listen. <laughs> well, just so you know. Wait till next month, the prices will drop on the existing 
Okay, wait until next month, he says. Okay, then and then you can get that. Well, my phones are probably four years old and they work just fine. Okay, so, but you need to take care of, good care of your stuff because you need to show appreciation. I want to tell you a very nice story here about Paul and Barnabas. These two guys, you will love this story. All this started in the chapter 9 with uh, Paul. Paul, his name was Saul and he was persecuting the church. So listen in verses 26, 27, it says, Then Saul went to Jerusalem. He tried to join the group of followers, but they were all afraid of him. They did not believe in him, but Barnabas accepted Saul and took him to the apostles. He told them how Saul had seen the Lord on the road and how boldly Saul had preached in Damascus. So Barnabas believed in him and said, Guys, this is a good guy, Saul. Bring him him. I, he accepted him. And they, they, they were good friends. You know, in, in the chapter 11, verse 26, first part, they spent one whole year together. They stayed in Antioch a whole year. Every time the church came together, Barnabas and Saul met with them and taught many people. So now, after Barnabas accepted Paul, now they are good friends and they are together. So, you know, in the morning, Paul texts Barnabas and says, Hey, what's up, Barnabas? What are we going to do today? And he says, Well, mate, you know, we need to do this job because they are working some things there to make money. And after that, we can have lunch with uh, such and such brother. Cool. So they made a reservation on their app and their app and whatever. <laughs> the whole year having fun, guys. So they are good friends. But listen, then the best part started. Oh, yeah. You know what? Chapter 13, 14, 15. Here is Paul and Barnabas. They go in missionary trips. Come on, man. There is a church there. We need to go and reach out these people. So they go to this town. And they say, do you know about Jesus? We don't know any Jesus. He is awesome. He is the king of kings. Really? How that works? Well, you just open your heart. We will pray for you. You ready? Okay. Ooh. They had so much fun. It was amazing. Three chapters, guys, that you read, you will say, man, those guys, they work hard. Okay. But in verse 36, here is one day Paul says, Barnabas, we need to go back to all the towns where we were told people the message of the Lord, and we should visit the believers to see how they are doing. What do you think about that? He says, well, what if we bring John Mark uh, also with us? But the thing is that John Mark did not continue with them in their first trip when they went to Pamphylia. So Paul did not think it was a good idea to take him this time. Ah, oh, that was the beginning. Paul and Barnabas, they were good friends. Now, they are not. <laughs> Paul and Barnabas had a big argument about this. It was so bad that they separated and went different ways. Barnabas sailed to Cyprus and took Mark with him, and Paul chose Silas to go with him. Come on. Let's go, Silas. Let's go there. Because we are the good guys. Now, Dave, we are the good guys. And here is on the other side. Barnabas. John Marcus, don't worry about them. We are related. We are the good guys. Let's go. Let's go and preach the gospel. Yes, Barnabas. Let's go and preach the gospel. Both teams. Both teams. But you tell me, isn't it true that is exactly that what we do when we get mad? Here is the spouse, the husband and the wife, that one day were so close to each other, loving each other, flowers and a steak every day, and, the, and suddenly, boom, boom, boom. And, uh, uh, Oh, oh, she doesn't like that. Here is one example of 
with someone who is using her perfected skills to express her disappointment. She takes off her shoe, known as a chunk, and throws it at the head of the object of her anger. And usually, she is pretty successful. And then, bam! There you go. Bam! There you go. That is what happens. You know, the power of chunkla. It happens, guys. It's exactly what we do. It's a powerful tool. It's a powerful tool. So here is Paul and Silas doing their their thing. And here is Barnabas with John Mark doing their thing. And suddenly Paul is growing more and more in his faith. And the Lord is revealing to him great things. So here is Paul. Grab his laptop and start typing the letters to the epistles, you know, to all the towns, you know. The letter to the Ephesians, sending the email. The letter to the Corinthians, you know, posted on Facebook. Write, writing his blog, all that, you know. And then he thinks, I need to tell something to the Corinthians. They need to hear this. Here is exactly the issue. One day we think, yeah, I need to tell this person something that he needs to hear. So here is Paul. and said, guys in Corinthians, I want you to know that God reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ And he gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Do you hear that? (laughs) Excuse me, sir? Yes? Did you say ministry of of what? Reconciliation. Do you don't understand that word? (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. Paul? Yes, Uh, Yes, ma'am? What is the meaning of the word reconciliation? You don't know the meaning of the word reconciliation. What's wrong with you? Reconciliation means that you are going to be at peace with each other. Ah, so that's what you mean? Yeah, yeah. the Lord gave us that ministry to all of us, all of us. Ha, ah, that's great. Okay. Sir, yes, yes, sir. Uh, I have a question for you. Do you know a guy named Barnabas? <laughs> Next question, sir. Do you know a guy named Barnabas? Please do not avoid my question. (laughs) Yes, I know a guy, Barnabas. What about it? Well, we have heard certain things between you and Barnabas. We heard that you guys were good friends. Yeah, once we were good friends. (laughs) But something happened. Something happened. Yeah, something happened. and what is what is that thing that happened? We want to know. <laughs> That's us. That's exactly us. And then the thing is, we start to tell the story from our view. Well, this is what happened, you know. This is so Barnabas is bad, is wrong, and this, and I'm good. And this, on the other hand, Barnabas probably on. Cyprus or wherever he was with John Mark was telling similar things because that is exactly what we do. We always tell the story from our angle and we shall say, no, I'm right. He is wrong. She is wrong. They are wrong. I'm doing the right thing. But the problem is this. The Lord already gave to Paul the revelation of reconciliation. And let me tell you something. There is nothing more difficult to anyone to deal with than when the Lord speaks to your heart. And if he speaks to your heart about something and you have that there, you cannot ignore that. You are going to deal with that passage of the scripture until you give up because the Lord is not going to give up. He will just insist and persist and continue talking to you about this particular thing until you get it. And that is what happened to Paul. So eventually Paul got it. And now, down the line in the future, here is Paul now writing to Timothy. (laughs) But not our Tim. Other Tim. (laughs) In the second letter in the chapter 4, verse 11, section B, listen to what Paul says to Timothy. He says, hey, by the way, get Mark and bring him with you when you come. He can... What? Help. Help me in my work here. 
So at this point, they already reconcile. So now Paul says, he can help me. He can help me. That, that is exactly the whole point, my friends. That when, when we are doing our things in life, we kind of get excited at the beginning with the thing, and then things go kind of slowly to the point of becoming a routine, and then eventually we just stop appreciating whatever is that thing or person, and then we go on our way, and then there is a fight, and there is no need for such a thing. We need just to come back to the main point, which is appreciating what we have. It's just about appreciation. The appreciation of God and the appreciation of the people. Colossians 2, 7. You must depend on our Lord Jesus only. Drawing life and strength from Him. Continue to grow stronger in your understanding of Him. And never stop giving thanks to God. It's all about being grateful of everything we have. It's just being appreciative. And you just say, Lord, I appreciate what, what you are giving me, and I thank you, Lord, for that. That is possible that someone needs to make the first step in his relationship with God. And it's through a prayer. I would like to, to read this prayer in the screen. Dear God, help me to see the good things in those around me. Help me appreciate you, Lord, and your word, and your Holy Spirit. I am sorry, Lord, that I have not appreciated my family the way I should. Please, Lord, forgive me. I am hoping that today your forgiveness will change me and guide me to be appreciative. I pray in the name, in the holy name of Jesus, from the bottom of my heart, I surrender to you, Lord. I ask you, please help me. I need a miracle in my life. I trust in you, Lord. Amen. Amen. By faith in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, through the cross, his death, and the power of his resurrection, we receive that forgiveness. That's why we appreciate him so much. Say with me, I am forgiven and saved by faith in Jesus. My life is going to be great and blessed this year, 2019. Amen. Dear friends, thank you so much for coming up to church and receive the blessing in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the peace of God with you. Enjoy your family and friends and see you next week. Amen. Anytime my heart turns from darkness to light. Anytime temptation comes and someone stands to fight. Anytime somebody lives to serve and not be served. I know, I know, I know, I know.